Good afternoon, everyone. Just waiting the. Uh... So um, it's I'm, I'm saying Reborn because um, I've been giving a similar talk a couple of years ago in Toronto um, for those who've been there um, around uh, memory on arm on mostly how memory is on Darling Zen. Um, so I think the first thing before going to the meta of the talk is uh, Zen on ARM in general, what's going on these days. Um, over the past years, um, we noticed a few places in Zen where it's not very compliant with the um, architecture, so with the ARM arms, which is the, uh, I would say, the Bible for ARM. Um, 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 most of the place, um, that the main place that there were, it was identified was um, the boot codes, memory subsystem, uh, guest memory subsystems on Atomic Selfer. Um, every time I'm speaking about it, and I'm saying to someone working on Zen, oh, there is compliance issue, and they're always asking me, but that's run fine, Zen is running fine for me, what are you talking about? Um, I've, Listing some of the recent examples, um, a few weeks ago we had an issue where Xen 411 when failing to boot on Sunderx, um, we realized it was because we were not following the arm arm. Um, we had for the past couple of years, um, 32 bit guests time to time failing to boot. It was roughly one time every week. Um, took us more than a year to figure out what was going on. on that was again because we were not following the ARMARM. Um, recently we've noticed like some um, system registers, we don't, don't use them correctly, so we assume that some of the bits are zero, but your revision of the architecture defines them to somewhere, something else on its face. Um, the main one that we've been working on is XSA 295, which was, um, we were using Atomix, uh, unsafe, unsafely on memory shared with a guest, which meant that the guest could potentially um, delay then or dose then um, by just accessing the page um, at the same time. So the main talk here is, so one of the things why do we want to follow the amount is, first thing is reliability. You don't really want the Xen running on the on a car on them every five minutes or every hour is crashing randomly. Um, you also want to be able to upgrade to a newer processor without Zen modifications. So moving to newer processors that are faster, more aggressive, um, then my face to run on it. Um, so there is a lot to talk about this. I'm going only to uh, scratch as a the, the top of everything uh, around boots on memory on links. So I will focus mostly on architectural guarantees on the ARM arm is authoritative, which means that if I say something wrong here and it's different from the ARM arm, the ARM arm is correct. Um, so the two parts I'm going to start speaking about is page table updates, and then I will speak about how to write in memory on how to read it uh, with MMU off. Um, I'm going to go quickly around uh, page tables in general, just to set up the expectations. Um, so the page tables on ARM is um, three level, um, where initial, actually four level, because there is another one. Um, an entry can either point to the block mapping, another translation table, or page descriptor. Um, so block mapping can be one gigabyte, uh, two megabytes of 4K. And ARM also supports multiple um, different kernels. So it can support 4K, 16K, and 64K. At the moment, then mostly support only 4K. Um, guests, we can support both 4K, 16K, and 64K. Um, in each patchable entry, so each, each entry will describe um, roughly how you access the memory, access permission, read, write, execute never, so if you don't want to execute something, uh, the memory type, like device, normal memory, um, shareability, so how this is accessed with um, 
across the platform, like with other CPU or other device. Cacheability, if it can be cached, if it cannot be cached, um, if it's white pack, etc. Um, access flag, just telling you um, whether the pair has been accessed. And um, contiguous bit on non-global bit, I will go towards them um, a bit later on. Um, also, using page tables is one thing, but you also need to be able to cache it uh, because it can be slow. It would be slow to work the page tables every time. Um, so, HTL B entry is containing data from the page descriptor and is tagged by ACIDs on VMID. Um, so, what's an ACID? An ACID is like the address space identifier. It identifies page associated to a single address space. So, it's only applied to uh, EL1 for the kernel and EL0 for user space. And it allows um, to easily switch between page tables without having to invalidate the TLB. And because of that, it's also cached by TLB on trees. Um, so on the other side, you also have the VMID. The VMID is very similar. It's for, it's a pair VMID. It's a virtual machine identifier. So it identifies the current virtual machine. So by current virtual machine, it's like a non-secure EL1, EL0. On every VMID has its own, has its space. On, as similar to the AZ, it is cached by the TLB. Uh, so you don't need to do TLB flush between uh, switching VM. Um, one of the things that people are interesting, uh, so as I mentioned, there, there is block entry, there is a page entry, but some of the people want also maybe a bit bigger, where this is where the contiguous bit is used. So it indicates one or multiple adjacent entry um, points to a contiguous output address range, which means that um, you could have a uh, for 4K, for instance, 16 entries, uh, 16 entries contiguous. And it allows the TLB to cache only one entry, so you don't need to cache 16 entries in the TLB, so relieving the pressure on the TLB. Um, one of the things also that can be uh, used for helping the TLB is uh, the non-global bit, so you can explain, you can say uh, that uh, this region is available for all the exits, so imagine that you have your kernel, uh, mapping that is always the same place on the, every page table, so you can say um, it's all for the all as is, so the TLB also can cache um, accordingly. Um, so that's roughly page tables, uh, how it works. No updating the page tables. According to the MRM, you have special condition. You need to um, apply some considerations when doing the translation table updates. Uh, so page table updates may not be just, oh, I'm going to uh, modify the entry on, even if it's existing like that, is you need to use um, a second that is called break before make. So it's, it's required by the arm um, every time you modify an entry, um, a valid entry. It's um, unsure that all the page table um, all the observer see a coherent view of the page table. So it's unsure that it's unsure that the, another CPU will not see half of the uh, table um, table, mod, um, table update entry. Um, why do we care? Well, on the platform, you have multiple observers. Uh, one of the observer is a page table worker. Um, it's in hardware. It will work. Uh, it will work the page table maybe at the same time as you're doing the as you're doing the updates. Uh, what does it mean? If you don't follow the break before make, it means that per the arm arm, you have two choices. It's the TLB may hold two, map, um, may hold two mappings of the same address, one of the previous address, one of the current, uh, current entry. And it's not clear from the arm, arm what it can happen. Well, the arm, arm explains to, it can lead to two problems. One of it is like constraint on predictable. It's, it doesn't say what C, it may see erroneous data, it may just an amalgamation of the two TL boundary. So for instance, it would be like a hook job with, between the two TL boundary, which means that it will access the wrong data. Or it could lead to a TLB conflict about. It means that the processor will raise an about on, you will receive it in your uh, software. 
on the software will then crash or doesn't know how to deal with it. Um, as I said, the break before magnets only to be applied in certain case. Uh, place to use it is like when you change the size of blocks, so for instance, moving from block mapping to a translation table, so shattering a, page ta uh, a super page, or from moving from the translation table to a block mapping. So like for instance, you have, um, you have a table and you want to do a super page mapping, or the other solution is like setting and setting uh, contiguous bits. Um, another, another one is uh, changing the output address. So if one of the entries is writable, um, you need to use a break before make. You also have to do it when uh, changing the memory type, cacheability attributes on global entry, when you change the global entry bit. Basically, you most of the time have to use a break before make. There's only a couple of cases where you don't need it, is changing the permission of an entry, so moving from read-write to, um, to writable or read-write executable to execute never, um, or changing the access flag. So it's, so how to do break before make? It's a four steps um, approach. First thing is remove the entry. So you put an availing entry, then you invalidate the cache. Um, so you, brought, you, you send a TLB, um, TLB flush, which will invalidate the cache entry. And by that, it will um, remove any potential, sorry. It will, um, it will remove any potential uh, way for another processor to see, another observer to see, um, it will only see one entry or the other entry. It won't see like the two entry together. Uh, and then you write the new entry. So by the step two and three, um, you will remove all the other entry and you, don't, you won't have any coherency problem. The, so that's one of the problems we notice on, uh, on Zen on ARM. Second problem is accessing the memory with, with MMU hub. Uh, before going to the problem, just going quickly through the cache architecture on ARM. Um, the ARM architecture is a modified hardware architecture. It has multiple cache, uh, level of caching with snooping. So you see a, an example on the sides with um, four CPU. Um, each CPU sh um, is having instructions um, L1 cache. And then you have two cluster, one cluster with CPU and with CP CPU2, sharing one L2 cache on the other one sharing, uh, um, sharing another L2 cache, and then you have the common cache or system cache um, in L3. Um, so you have separate high cache. Um, there is no snooping between instruction cache and B cache. Um, they can be either PIPT, so which is physically indexed, physically tagged, or non-aliasing VIPT cache for the D cache. Um, all the cache are meeting uh, to the point of unification. So the point of unification uh, is uh, L2. Uh, no, actually, I'm, I did something wrong here. Uh, no, L, sorry, um, L2 for the point of unification. So that's where the instruction cache and D cache are meeting together. And there is a point of coherency where, which is where all the CPU will have share the same cache. Um, so the cache, how is, the, the cache is controlled by a couple of attributes in the page tables, which is the memory type, normal, normal on device, on the cacheability, shareability. So it would tell you whether um, data from a specific region will be um, either cached or skip the cache. And there is, to enable bits is not really enable bits. It's more like uh, an attribute override. So even if you decide to disable the cache, it may still be used. Uh, on, in general, it's kind of um, invisible to the normal software, but there's an exception, which is, as my first previous slide said, MMU is turned off. It's quite common in general when you boot the guests uh, or when you boot them, um, you always start with MMU hub. 
you need to write patch tables with MMU off, but you also read the patch tables with MMU on afterwards. What could go wrong? Well, um, write access with MMU off is non-cacheable, which means that when you write the memory, it will, it will directly go to the RAM. It won't go through the cache. But the cache state is unknown at boot. You, it may be unknown. It depends uh, on how it's been defined by the protocol. Um, on, so a cache may contain a dirty line, a clean line. You don't know. On, a cache can, be, uh, can speculatively load the line. So for instance, you decide to write uh, to the memory, and then at some point you say, oh, I want to, be, I want to cache it. So with a pro proper man proper maintenance, what does it mean? You may have your data over items if you have a, a dirty line because the dirty line may be evicted at any time, or you may read the whole data because the data was, um, was clean on the cache you didn't decide to reload it. Um, thankfully, uh, some people have thought about it and decided to help us a bit on explaining what could be the state of the cache when you boot it. Um, on, so the ARM64 image boot protocol, which has been created by the Linux kernel and also used by Xen, um, will describe the state of the processor at boot. So it describes like um, whether uh, the MMU will be turned off or turned on, the cache, state of the cache, state of certain registers, etc. Um, in our case, when you boot, you have MMU turned off. Um, the loaded image will be clean to point of coherence, which means that it's sitting, uh, potentially, if your point of coherence is the L3, it will be sitting, uh, everything will be clean to L3. On the state of the cache for the rest of the RAM is unknown. This is included BSS, because BSS usually is not part of the image, it's just a site, because you want to zero them at some point. Um, so, it means that when you write with the MMU off, on your way with the MMU on, you have to take care on some case, and depending on where you write it, if you write in the loaded image or write outside of the loaded image, you have two different things to care. Um, as I pointed out, for the loaded image, it's clean to point of coherency. So, if you want to, uh, it means if you want to read uh, the memory, um, the first thing you need to do is write the data and then invalidate any entry that you modified. Uh, it will remove any clean cache line and it will also re avoid to read the wrong data because when you read the data with a memory horn, the cache will have to pull it from the memory. Um, if you, so that's one case, so that's the case of the page tables. Another case of BSS, which is a bit more a bit more complicated because it's in the RAM, you don't know where, um, you don't know the state of the RAM, a cache, it may be clean, it may be dirty, uh, so you have to be really careful with that. The first thing you have to do in that case is invalidate the regions. By invalidating the regions, you will remove any line, um, it prevents any dirty line to, go, to be evicted, and it's also over to override the data because if you evict the cache line, it will override the data. Um, so then, first step, doing the um, invalidation of the cache. Second step is writing the data. But you still need to invalidate the cache afterwards because, as I pointed out, the cache may speculatively load the entry. So even if you clean the cache before writing the data, it may still contain any other line in it. So you will may read one data if you don't do that one. Um, so that's giving you an idea on the ARM architecture, a really high level. I could go probably on a couple of hours in that more uh, trying to explain every, every single part and trying to show how this is, can be tricky to handle. For Xen point of view, it's, it brings some interesting problem, actually. Uh, mostly, I would be blunt, mostly all the boot codes on the memory code is not compliant with the uh, ARM arm. 
we already seen some example like on recently on ThunderX where it doesn't boot. You don't know why it doesn't boot with some configurations. So there's two parts to taking care of. Is first part is memory write on with MMU off, like the page table, BSS, and the second part is setting up the page tables. Um, so the, the two parts from writing the MMU off is uh, zeroing the BSS and setting up the initial page tables. For zeroing the BSS, it's mostly required because we have all the boot page tables in it. Uh, if you manage to move all the bush page tables, you don't need to be on to zero BSS that early, and you could zero BSS with MMU on, so you don't have to take care of the cache. Um, for setting up the initial page tables, it's a bit more interesting because, well, you can't move them outside, even if they are in the loaded image, uh, you still need to take care of the cache management, so you write the, memo the page tables, and then you need to invalidate everything before continuing. Um, um, this means that basically uh, there is a, a big part of the boot codes to be able to uh, look at it, uh, removing, uh, understanding where uh, the cache needs to be flush, uh, if the cache needs to be flush, on what's the implication with the rest of the code. Um, the second part is, I think, is the most interesting bit of. Um, of the problem here is when you boot, uh, you boot with the MMU off, but you need to turn on the MMU. Uh, when you would boot with the MMU off, you are using the physical address, but as soon as you turn on the MMU, you use a virtual address. And to turn on the MMU, you need to have an identity map, a one-to-one -one map between the physical address and the virtual address. So as soon as you enable the MMU, the CPU can continue. Um, Today, the memory layout for Xen is static. So we define exactly where everything is loading for the virtual address. But Xen can be loaded anywhere in the memory. So there is a clash, potentially, between uh, anything in the virtual memory layout on the identity mapping. So what we are doing today is uh, trying to avoid that by switching between page tables. Over, at that point, you don't break before Mac. You can't modify any entry uh, without removing an entry. Uh, so you can't switch between two page tables with the MMU home. MMU home. It's not safe. Uh, that has two implications. Is if you have only one CPU, you could boot removing the one-to-one -one mapping and then continuing setting up your virtual mapping. You can't do that for CPU bring up, like um, for the secondary CPU, because uh, either you'll have to re rebuild the page tables, but you can't switch to the runtime page tables. They've been built by the boot CPU. And same problem is applying to suspend resume, is if you suspend your, your platform, you will come back with MMU off. Uh, you either have the source to rebuild the page table, which can be expensive, and you may not know everything, or you have to keep the one-to-one -one mapping. Uh, that's a, one strong implication is the memory layouts can't be static. The memory layouts needs to be dynamic, so it works around where is the one-to-one -one mapping, and then moving around every part of them, like uh, then text, then it, etc. It's, um, I would say the work is not, um, is not easy. It's, uh, it's really big, it's quite consequent, so it's modifying most of the boots on most of the memory. Uh, so I've decided to split the work in uh, multiple series. Uh, to give you an idea, I've like around like 150 patches so far, and I haven't done the virtual memory layout uh, reshuffling. Uh, Thankfully, thanks to the help of Stefano, we managed to already uh, merge a bit of the work. Uh, so all the updating of page tables has been reworked, uh, which makes things a bit simpl simplified a bit the code. Um, the boot code rework is under review. Um, I think it's still in good state to be merged, uh, mostly for, for 13. Um, 
all the rest of the moments is uh, still in, needs to be cleaned up, uh, tested, uh, check again across the, um, against the amount on seeing whether I missed anything. Uh, I think in general we, it would be good to have more commands review testing because I can test on a couple of platforms but I can test on all the existing amount platforms so testing a bit more will help us to understand whether the code works or the code is buggy. Uh, this is also assembly code so it's not uh, the easiest things to, uh, to read on making sure it works. Um, the end plan is to have everything merged by, I don't think for certain, but maybe um, the next release uh, for the 14th, I think it's planned for next year. Um, so yeah, so that's basically it. Uh, I know it's a quite a, a lot to digest. It's not the, uh, it's not the easiest part of the armor. Uh, if I would be happy to answer, um, any questions on this, uh, on the Amam or on them, if you want, if you have any. Yeah. You need to invalidate only one on three. But I would say that in general, using Vibric for Mac, it's um, not the things recommended. So like for instance, if you want to modify a Xen on tree, uh, because uh, you move, you relocate Xen somewhere else. Um, if you want to remove that on tree, you need to remove it, invalidate it. But if you have another CPU using it, it may just crash because there is no on tree. So in general, my approach at the moment is uh, removing uh, any place, any potential place where Vagri format is needed. So it's making everything simple is that you, when you update the page tables, you remove an entry, um, you insert it. If you insert it and there is an entry already there, it doesn't work. Or it will just return an error. It makes, it makes things a bit easier to follow in it. So for those that wonder, we had exactly the same issue with uh, guest page tables on LinkedIn then. Uh, but it's been merged, um, I think we've done the work in 2017, something like that, 2016, actually. So, sorry, I didn't get to that. I, I don't know what's a good protocol for MTF. Yeah, it might be different in, because it's using basically the beginning of the platform, they may have different things, they may just invalidate the full cache from the beginning. We could invalidate the full cache, but it's quite, it's one, one is quite expensive, and two, there is no easy way to do it on ARM. Yeah, if there is no other questions, thank you for listening. <laughs>